So I hate the idea of Hollywood rich where you have to just have millions of dollars to be considered rich and millions of dollars worth of liabilities to be considered rich. And overall, when I define rich, I mean you have EM. And EM stands for, you have what I call enough money. Enough money to have freedom to make the choices you actually want to make. And by the way, in order to actually have enough money, there are a lot of things you're going to have to give up to gain financial freedom. It's like Jesus says, for example, okay, to gain your life, you must be willing to lose it. You have to lose it, okay? So overall, what I mean is here, okay, there are things I'm going to ask you, five things specifically to give up on. Now, when you give these things up and you acquire financial freedom, you will say, I don't even know why I was so attached to having those things in the first place, because in reality, they're not actually worth anything. And I learned that along the way in nearly a decade of working and just battling these things that I thought I wanted, thought I needed. And then I was like, I don't need them. Thus, why would I want them in the first place? Everything changes once you fully understand. And my goal is to help you understand why you actually don't need these things in the first place. And how you can actually help yourself by basically giving them up right now. Now, the very first thing, guys, as always, is like this video on top. I also subscribe, hit the bell to get notified. This stuff helps me out a lot, and that's why I ask you guys to actually do it, okay? Now, the very first thing you want to give up is you want to give up the idea of AM and replace it with, not PM, it's not like AM, PM, it's just replace it with EM, okay? Now, AM basically means, hey, Tommy, I wanna have a lot of money to be financially free. That is a very stupid idea. You wanna have enough money because a lot of money basically means a lot of it. Now, that goal is so broad, it's so big, and what is required to actually do it? How much is it exactly? It's not actually a fixed number in any way. Now, my advice would be is, you wanna know exactly how much money you actually need. How much is enough money? Now, a very simple thing that's gonna help you out a lot is basically, you wanna to learn to one, budget your money, Two, to basically have a high savings rate, I think the average person should be living on, for example, half their income, or at least saving a third of all their income, like at least 30% of all your income should be saved. So if you're able to actually live on less, you're able to invest more and save more. Thus, you can actually build up to your enough money or EM a lot faster. So a simple rule is basically this, okay, to figure out exactly how much money, for example, you need to have invested to produce for you what you need in passive income. So if you're able to basically, if you have an income of $40,000 and you're going to live on half, okay, so half of that is basically $20,000. What you need to do with the money you need to live is multiply it by the number 25, and that tells you exactly how much money you need in the stock market. Now, if you have a half a million dollars in the market, and you take out just 4% of your profits every year, multiply by 0.04%, that's gonna make you $20,000 in passive income. Thus, it's very unlikely you're going to run out of money. It's a very simple way. So whenever I say, hey, I wanna have enough money, enough money looks like a half a million dollars, but I wanna live off $20,000 a year. What do you do with the 20%? Well, the other $20,000, you obviously invest, 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 save, 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 or you try to pay off your mortgage even faster and faster and faster. That is the idea. Now, number two is you wanna give up on the idea of having a fancy car. Well, to be even more specific, any car, that you cannot afford in cash is a car you basically do not need and you should not buy. Now, here's a very simple example, okay? Real life, I have a friend and this guy makes a ton of money. He's a part of the 1%, okay? And he basically bought a 2009 Honda CRV with 115,000 miles on it. Now, why would he do this? because he knows that the average Honda runs for around 205,000 miles. That basically means, well, Tommy, if he bought this Honda for $7,000, right? And he's basically, well, think about it, right? 205,000 miles, 
He bought it at 115,000 miles, okay? He has another 90,000 miles to go on this car on average. So if you divide this by 12,000 miles a year, you're looking at, for example, he has another seven and a half years to go. In those seven and a half years, he can save up and buy whatever car he basically wants, okay? If he saves up at least, for example, let's say $2,000 a year, well, multiply that by two, he's able to have, for example, $15,000 saved to buy whatever car he basically wants to buy later in cash if he wants to. But that's the difference from having, for example, a lot of money to invest or not enough because of crazy car payments. Now, an even more extreme example is this. I remember being in college and taking the bus every single day. And I remember my friend had a little Honda, okay? It was like a little Honda, little car, Honda Civic, like year 2000 or whatever. And that was his car. He paid it. He bought it. He drove it. And I remember my other friend, she had this beautiful Mercedes. And it was, it was, it was, a uh, what do you call those cars? It was, a uh, it was not a sedan. It was, a uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't, I forgot what those cars are. <laughs> Oh, it was an SUV. Oh my goodness. I don't know. CRV, SUV, I just confused the heck out of me. Okay, but it was an SUV. And in reality, the crazy thing was that her car was beautiful. It ran like crazy. It was fast. But her car had car payments and his car didn't. And they both go to school on time, okay? Have priorities in life. It's not about how you get there, what you're driving. It's about what does that mean and what is that car helping you accomplish. So again, any car you cannot afford to pay for in cash, don't buy it. Always look for quality. Do not look, for example, for notoriety, okay? Now, number three is you want to give up on the idea of buying a fancy house. To be even more extreme, any house you cannot afford to pay off in 15 years or less and that you're paying more than 30% of your monthly income on payments is a house you cannot afford to buy. So you wanna limit your home searches to houses you can afford to pay off in 15 years where you're not paying more than a third of your monthly net income on payments. That includes the mortgage, insurance, taxes, and maintenance, okay? PMI also. That is everything there. This basically means automatically, it sounds crazy because automatically there are so many houses now that you cannot basically buy anymore. And in reality, you could never buy them in the first place. All you could do was afford the payments for 30 years. That's just a long time, okay? So it was a trap in the first place. Your goal is to own a home, not to live in a home that you're gonna pay off 30 years later. Your goal is to pay it off as fast as possible. Now, quick story here, because I wanna use all these real examples. I remember going to a family member's house and he lived in a penthouse apartment, still does, okay? And I walk into his house and it was basically marble floors, high ceilings, absolutely gorgeous. And I remember going back home a few days later to my little house with normal floors, floors, low ceilings, and not everything was fancy in my house, okay? My house is nice, but it's not fancy like that one. And I remember sitting in my couch and saying, my used couch and saying, this is my house. I have no payments on it. It's mine. But his house is fancy. High ceilings in the middle of everything. It's in the city. And I was like, his house is just a torment because he has to worry about those monthly payments every single month for the next decades or so. Okay. So there's a big difference. The goal is to own a home, not to have a home that looks nice, but stresses you the heck out because you have to worry about payments for the next 30 years. That is the big difference, okay? So you wanna give up on the idea of these fancy homes. If you cannot afford it, put the idea away. Now, the fourth thing you wanna give up on is basically the Hollywood retirement. And that basically means the idea that retirement means never having to work again, and thus the average person has to wait until they're 65 years old because it takes a long time to build up that much money to be able to achieve that goal. Now, imagine this. What if we're actually able to stop working as many hours a lot sooner. And by the way, once you hit 65 years old, you have like 10 years left in you. It's not quality years as you're a lot older. So my point is this, okay? What if you work 15 hard years to pay off your mortgage, to invest 500 bucks per month at an 8% return that gets you around $162,000, around 
$504 per month of tax-free income if you put that money in a Roth IRA, okay? That is awesome, that is beautiful. Now, not just that, if you need less money because you have a paid off mortgage, if you have $540 coming in every single month, that's around 25 hours at a $20 hour rate that you don't have to work anymore. So that's the big difference. So imagine now, instead of needing to work full time, now you can work basically part time. So that saves you just years of work because it's time you don't have to spend working. And it's also freedom to work the job you actually enjoy working. So when I think about retirement, I think about, for example, working a lot less in a job I enjoy and having a lot more free time. But I don't see retirement as I don't have to work at all and have a bunch of money and I'm old and I'm just waiting to basically die, okay? That's not the way I see retirement. I see I can work 15 hard years, invest money, have a paid off home, need a lot less, work part time, and you have a, free, a bunch of free time. That is awesome. That is beautiful. Now, number five, and the last thing you wanna give up is basically brand versus value. The other day I was at basically Price Smart. That's like the equivalent of Costco here in the Dominican Republic. And I saw two brands, okay? I saw Select and I saw, for example, Puma. Select is like this, um, it's like Kirkland for Costco. It's like their own brand or whatever. Well, Select is like their brand here in Dominican Republic over at Price Smart. And I was looking at PJs, two PJs, okay? Um, the Select brand had three pieces. The Puma had, for example, two pieces. The Puma was basically double the price. Why? The same material, same exact thing, but one had Puma on it and one was basically just Select. The one I went with was basically the select one because the same materials. You have to be able to be smart enough to differentiate, for example, when you're looking at brand and quality, when you're just looking at, for example, just the brand name of something and status. And status and brand name do not equal quality. It's why, for example, companies like Toyota and Honda and I think, who else, who else? Nissan, all these companies, all they have, for example, value vehicles that work great, their quality vehicles, they also have brand and prestige brands. For example, Toyota has Lexus. Same company, makes the same exact cars, right? Different interior, a lot higher price, but people of status want those instead of the Toyotas because the Toyotas are boring, but it's the same exact car in a sense. You have, for example, Nissan, they make Infiniti also, fancy cars, right? You have, for example, Honda, they make Acura, fancy wear, whatever, right? That's the point, okay? You have to learn to differentiate when it comes to quality brand, right? Because brand can equal quality too. Like Toyota's a good brand, but Lexus is just like a brand of prestige because it's like the same vehicles, but you're paying more because it gives you more status. You want to be careful with those things, okay, guys? So my point is this, okay? Be able to look at when you're buying something and saying, I'm not just buying this because of prestige of what it, the idea it gives me, but I'm buying it because it's actually a quality product. So whenever I think about Mercedes and buying like a crazy fancy car, I fall back and say, hey, this Toyota is just fine. This Honda is just fine. It's a quality vehicle, it lasts a long time, gets from point A to point B, that's all I need, okay? So if you want to be able to be financially free, to be wealthy, to be rich. These are ideas and concepts you have to be willing to give up on, okay? And when you do, you achieve financial freedom a lot faster. And when you're there, you're like, why did I care about a Mercedes? Why did I care about buying things I couldn't afford? Why did I care about this and that? And life is just a lot better in a sense, okay? Financial wise, okay? Now, as always, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something. I hope it actually helped you in some way. And if you made it all the way to the end, comment down below which one of these things you need to give up most right now, okay? For me, it was probably the idea of having a fancy car. I, I just, I love cars for some reason. Um, I'm, I'm a guy, I'm just stupid like that. And I love cars. So that idea of having this fancy car, I gave it up and I'm just like, I'm just gonna get just a vehicle. And then with that vehicle, I'm gonna use those five, seven years to save up to buy a nicer vehicle in cash. But this way, I'm not forsaking myself right now to get something I can't afford right now or something that's not a priority right now. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the button to be notified. Up here is another banger. Over here is my Facebook subscribe. And as always, long-term team officially out. Peace.